Hi everyone and welcome to Ama Story House, the place where books bring us together when we have to be apart. And this week we are talking about the Science Center. But what does science look like to a three, four, and five-year-old child? Well, it is a place to explore, experience, talk about, ask lots of questions, and get messy. Yes, three, four, five, and even six-year-old children want to get messy when learning about science and the natural world. So the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that they always come to these activities with clothing that is comfortable and that can be soiled. Why? Because the second that you become frustrated that they have ruined their nice sneakers or have stained their nice shirt, you completely change the dynamic of the time with your child. And that's not, um, the what we want to do. We want to make sure that the experiences that you and your child share are always uh, enjoyable, full of love, full of nurturing conversation, and a lot of fun. So what is it that you need in order to engage and interact with your child in your home with science? Well, you need what you always need, which is pencils, colored pencils, paints, crayons, all types of writing utensils that are fun and colorful for your child. You also need a journal. Why? Because as you know, scientists have to document, diagram, and illustrate their findings. So what better way than to offer your child at any age of something to write on? So whether purchased or whether made, it is a really fun thing to, uh, fun tool for them to have in their science kit. I always like to make my own because one, it shows my child that I am resourceful and that I don't always have to get in my car and go and spend money to make something that I can possibly just take a few more minutes and look around my house and seeing if I have those materials to make my own. And two, I can decorate it and I can make it with them as well. Another activity. See, win-win. So, once you have your writing utensils and your writing material there, what else do you need? Well, you need to become a collector, a collector of all things natural. That means that maybe you go on, uh, you're taking a bike ride or you're taking a walk in the park and you see some seeds on the floor. Well, you're going to get off your bike and you're going to go collect them. You have your child even better to go on a scavenger hunt and find things that are on the floor, on the ground, or maybe, you know, if they don't belong to anybody, take a little leaf here and there along the way, or a special rock that you see. Um, all of those items, become a collector of them because they are really great for teaching some science concepts. If you're a little concerned about whether they're dirty or not, then of course take a Ziploc bag and pick them up with gloves, bring them home, put them in warm, sudsy water, set them to dry, and play. Okay, so what do you need? So seeds. Seeds that you come across, again, on your scavenger hunts through the parks. Uh, seeds that are found in the things that you eat, avocado and lemons. Seeds from apple seeds, lime seeds, all of that. Leaves that you might have found along the way as well. Become a collector of these items because there's so many sorting things that you can do. You can sort by texture. You can sort by size. You can sort by color. You can sort by whether the seed is something that we eat or something that is um, a plant life. So there are a lot of sorting opportunities to do sorting, um, you know, again, from smallest to, to largest. So a lot of things that you can do if you have a nice uh, variety of collected things. Um, twigs are also, you know, interesting to have. You can sort them by whether they're thin or thicker, whether they're longer, lots of things to do. Uh, you know, you just have to kind of think about them a little bit and see what they have in common or how they are separate. What else you need? Well, plastic bugs. And I know that we don't have red crickets in the world, but if you have a variety of plastic bugs, you still could talk about their body parts. Once again, sorting how many legs, wings, no wings. Um, and of course, your magnifying glass. See? Now, like you can make these, but you find them in dollar stores all the time. This was a two-pack for a dollar. 
So you see, you can um, have tools that scientists work with and teach the child, you know, why we use a, um, a magnifying glass, being able to see the segments, the little antennas, the pincers, body parts, leg parts. You can also use your magnifying glass with the seeds that you find, um, you know, and, and showing them how, you know, how the glass magnifies and makes the, makes the image bigger. Those are also really great uh, things to have in your kit. Magnets, be it the magnets on your refrigerator or potato bag clips, be it souvenirs that you found um, in your travels. Again, you know your child best. If you know that they are still at that mouthing stage of development, then you know don't use small items. But definitely give them a magnet. Make a list of the items in your house that it adheres to or sticks to and, and the things that it doesn't. You know, uh, you don't have to have a lesson on, magnet, um, on magnetic forces, but you can make a list of, you know, where does it stick, where doesn't it stick, where is it metal, where is it not metal, does it stick on metal, does it stick on wood, does it stick on plastic. These are all great vocabulary words to have. Okay, so again, we don't have red bugs, but this is still has antennas, still has legs, has wings, has um, the body parts, and you can check it out with your magnifying glass. Okay, you can also have magnets that are animal, that have animals, be it farm animals, jungle animals, ocean animals, um, sun, moon, weather stations, things like that. Right here, you have sorting barn animal versus jungle animal. Here we have parenting, you know, the young uh, and the parents. And again, making that connection of animals uh, in the wild or in nature uh, with their young is important because it really shows them empathy. It shows them empathy for animal life, right? We all want the same thing, be it a chicken or a crocodile. We all want our young to be safe, to have food in order to survive and move into the next level of their development. So look at that, we have something in common with even a crocodile mommy, right? So those are really great science ideas that we can um, discuss with our children without it being a sit down workbook, lectures um, type of activity. You're just casually speaking to them about it. Here's a great puzzle. Puzzles that have themes in science are really great as well because one, you're playing a game with your child, but you're also reinforcing some kind of uh, science idea or topic, okay? Planting, planting seeds, working in the garden with them. Now, this is a seven week old plant. And I also stuck a garlic in there. Have you ever seen the garlic when it has that little root that's starting to come out? Um, and so I, I planted it in there. I think it's this one that's dried up. I don't know if I've taken care of it. But this is my granddaughter's seed that she planted seven days ago, uh, seven weeks, seven weeks ago. And this is her first week journal entry, you see? Now, remember, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and five-year-olds are not going to journal the way that you imagine um, you, sh they should journal. Remember that we're going to throw away any notion of what we think three, four, and five-year-olds should do, could do, or must do. Your child is unique. They do science and they do, basically they will, do every activity different than you did it as a four-year-old or that your neighbor's uh, child is doing it or that even a sibling did it. Your child is unique. They will explore and experience and learn in their own pace. And this to me is amazing. She had, I'm sorry, she has the black base and she had the green leaves. I see that, you see that? We write the date on it. We converse with our children about what it is and we write down a little note and then keep it. Never know. So you see, um, again, we want to be able to illustrate, diagram, write in our journals, any experiences that we might have had. Also, when you are cooking, that is a really great um, time to talk about science because scientists explore their world through their senses. And so think about cooking, uh, smelling a cinnamon stick, uh, tasting ginger tea, uh, ooh, tasting a lemon, 
or a lime, right? As long as it's safe, not like peppers or hot sauce or anything crazy like that, but definitely things that are safe for them to try um, when you're cooking and, and it requires butter, you know, giving them a little dab of butter in their mouth or if they're cooking with sugar, having a little sugar or seasoning and you have them taste the seasoning and describe the, the, that sensation through the senses. What does it sound like? What does it taste like? What do you hear? Um, a lemon is perfect for that, right? What does it look like? Yellow, round. What does it feel like? Firm, supple, um, you know, heavy, maybe. Uh, what can you hear? Well, if it's juicy and you put it to your ear, you might hear that little sloshing sound, right? Uh, what do you taste? It's bitter. It gives me a little twang in the back of my jawline, right? So experiencing our world through those senses is amazing. Dirt. What? How many drops of water does it take to turn dirt into mud? I don't know. You might know. You'll know once you do that experiment with your child. So definitely thinking about how can you explore the natural world around you with your child in a loving, nurturing, and fun way. Remember, at this point in their life, it's not about learning the concepts or being able to, um, you know tell another person you know when we when we do this i do this with my kid too when they do something amazing you always tell them you know go show it to somebody somebody and or come let me show you what my kid knows this isn't about repeating something that you fed them or that they have heard from you this is about them having that experience so that when the third grade teacher says does anyone know about photosynthesis your child might not know about photosynthesis but they will know what it was like to eat an apple find the seed, plant the seed, and gift that little plant to their grandmother on Mother's Day. Or when they say in fourth grade, um, does anyone know about the water cycle? Your child is going to remember that summer day when it was so hot, that the storm in the afternoon was so violent and so much water fell that the next morning you allowed them to go outside and jump in all the puddles. They'll remember that because we are building knowledge um, for them right now at this stage that they are going to use in future years in their school and in their lives. And that's our job. It is not to sit them down and lecture them with workbooks and index cards. It is to offer them rich, loving experiences that get messy and you're talking about science and science ideas, but in a very natural and organic way. So I hope that this was a little helpful to you in wanting to experience science with your child a little bit more. Um, and so have fun. And thank you for joining me. Bye.